Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So just over a week ago, an Australian woman from the city of Brisbane was viciously attacked online for daring to demonstrate that she is a devoted wife and mother. Brooke Smith shared her daily caretaking routine in the Facebook group Mums Who Cook, Clean and Organize and my oh my did it cause a stir. So much so that it was picked up by a number of media outlets including Australia's The Today Show. I want to take you back to the 1950s or at least that's what I thought when I read this Brisbane Mums Facebook post. Brooke Smith shared her routine online. Here's what she said. I always make sure I don't go to bed until everyone's lunches are packed, their clothes are set out for the next day including my my husband's and the house is clean, dishwasher is on and a load of washing is on. I always get up early, 4.30, with my husband to make his breakfast no. and coffee. Um, go, Brooke. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I mean, I, I tell you what, though, Chris, I mean, a lot of people um, online are, are saying, well done, are, are praising her. Who? Who are these people? <laughs> Oh, has he hypnotised her or something? Who does this stuff? <laughs> Making his breakfast and then putting his clothes out of a night? Is he disabled or something? Like, seriously. <laughs> like, get a grip. Get off your bum and do stuff yourself. My only theory is that she might actually like her husband and she might actually like to get up at 4.30 and spend some yeah. time no, I mean, him. I like my husband, but make your own bloody breakfast <laughs> and coffee. It I does. mean, you know. <laughs> but the amazing thing, apparently this couple run an MMA fighting gym. Oh, like mixed they, martial arts. Mixed martial arts and they also breed bulldogs, so they can do whatever they want. <laughs> I'm like, you're not arguing. Yeah. Hey, you know what, if it makes her happy... But, I mean, nothing in that list of things there, you know. And she's Slowly. got four children under the age of six. But did you see her photos too? She still had time to, like, make her hair yeah. look beautiful oh. and put her makeup she's on. Killing, women attacking women. She looks gorgeous. Women. Yeah. I think she's gorgeous. Yeah, you're making yeah. the rest of us look bad. Now, the decidedly cruel tone of those TV hosts and those who'd said similar things in response on Facebook to what is really quite a normal domestic arrangement in a household with multiple young children is quite confronting, especially when you consider what they left out of this reporting. Here is Brooke's full post. But before I read it to you, everyone, if you can hear a weird noise in the background, there is a literal thunderstorm outside. I apologize in advance. Here is Brooke's full post. I always make sure I don't go to bed until everyone's lunches are packed, their clothes are set out for the next day, including my husband's, and the house is clean, dishwasher is on, and a load of washing is on. Sometimes it means I get to bed at nine, sometimes that means I get to bed at midnight. I always get up early, 4.30 a.m. with my husband to make his breakfast and coffee, to make time for me, have a hot coffee and do my hair. I get a little peace and quiet meditation slash exercise in and do my face for the day. A happy mum equals happy household. Do it even when you feel like not doing it because you'll be happy for it the next day. Far from the subservient dits the TV host and many of the Facebook commenters depicted her as, Brooke is a woman whose extraordinary organization allows her to not only keep an efficient household, but gives herself time to regroup, refresh, and remain healthy and happy. Speaking to news.com.au afterwards, Brooke said of the rather cruel reaction that if someone works hard in the sun all day as a tradie five or six days a week, which her husband does, and also works after hours to make their business work, which he also does by conducting MMA classes, she thinks it is the least she can do and he shouldn't be expected to come home and cook and clean. Can somebody please tell me how any of that is unreasonable? That just sounds like even division of labor to me, especially as Brooke helps out with the couple's small business and breeds bulldogs and they have four children under the age of six. So. Why that kind of animosity from the media and, most pointedly, from other women? Why are women telling her that she is somehow subservient to her husband when they very clearly have equal but different roles? Well, I'll give you two reasons. Guilt and jealousy. <laughs> Jealous much? There is nobody quite so good at tearing down women than other women. We're always jockeying for status within the pack. And when confronted by a woman who not only makes time for herself, her kids, her husband, helps run two family businesses and manages to look like this, <coughs> the most insecure among us will most certainly lash out. There have been four generations of women now who have had drummed into them that the surefire way to female happiness is to have a high-flying career and a husband who does all the housework. 
Obviously, that is not the case, given the steady decline of female happiness over the past few decades. When faced with a woman who seems decidedly happy and absolutely not oppressed by making different, more traditional choices, those women with fragile egos and low self-esteem simply can't take it. And ironically, the most vicious critics of women who make traditional choices are feminists, despite insisting constantly that women should have a choice over everything in their lives, from their careers to their reproductive functions. Now, the reaction to Brooke Smith is very similar to what has been playing out in the media and on social media regarding another type of traditional woman. Enter the trad wife, women who are ditching the stress and constraints of the 9 to 5 rat race and choosing to live the traditional life of a homemaker. Now, at first glance, this doesn't actually seem particularly radical. I mean, there are plenty of housewives out there. However, the difference here is that these trad wives choose to place their husband's needs and happiness before their own, entrust their husbands, all the finances, and self-confessedly submit to men. Now, while this is not my thing, this arrangement absolutely works to, for them, and there are plenty of testimonies out there from trad wives who say it has vastly improved their lives and their relationships with their husbands. This seemed to really come to light in January this year when UK trad wife Elena Kate Petit, who runs a blog called The Darling Academy, appeared on This Morning UK. Because he is the breadwinner, it, that's his department to look after our family. It's almost like a business. He knows what's coming in and going out. I'm obviously aware of what's coming in and going out, but I don't concern myself with it. He does give me an allowance, but it's essentially housekeeping money. It's no different from getting a paycheck. And if I'm really frugal with it, whatever's left is mine. He's not pouring over my receipts. Following this rather charming appearance by Elena, feminist journalists had a bit of a freak out. A number of articles appeared expressing everything from mild concern to outright disdain at the trad wife movement. There was a bizarre urgency to the commentary, as if the authors of these articles were desperate to paint these women as leading female kind down a path of misery and regression. There were three common gripes I noticed in these reaction pieces. Number one, that self-confessedly living like a 1950s housewife involves reverting to all elements of the 1950s, many of which were not the best for women. Okay, so first, Elena was very clear in her interview that the plan was not to totally revert back to the 1950s. It's not to do with the ideals of the 50, because, 50s, because there's yeah. so much of that that was wrong. It's almost just cherry-picking certain parts that we really identify with and applying it to a modern lifestyle. Second, there is no point comparing trad wives and women who do the domestic load to 50s housewives that Betty Friedman wrote about in The Feminine Mystique. The problem back then wasn't that they were doing domestic labor all day, it was the fact that they didn't have any kind of choice. Businesses back then wouldn't hire married women, and if you did get married, well then you had to quit. It was the lack of options that did everyone's heads in, especially just after the war when these same women who had realized their talents were very useful and meaningful outside the home were suddenly boxed back into the home and told against all their better instincts that the pinnacle of feminine happiness was found in domestic work. That has zero to do with the trad wife trend today and any feminist who says otherwise is a liar and a moron. The second common gripe was the language trad wives use about submitting to their husbands. Well, Elena spoke to the Times about this and clarified that they mean submit in the Christian sense of the word. She says, The Christian view of submit is not subservience. It's a clear division of labor. I have to earn my husband's trust. It's not about him overruling or him being overbearing. Everybody serves someone they love. You serve your children because you care for them. You want to spoil them. She also said that there was no difference between her service in the household and her husband's service to her in going out to work, and added that he submitted to her over matters of the home. Again, that's just complementarianism. The husband is absolutely at the service of the wife and kids by working long hours to provide 100% of the household funds. The wife then does her share by managing the home and taking the pressure off her husband there, who already has the pressure of work. None of that is unreasonable or controversial. I mean, people have been living like that for centuries and still very much do all over the world, quite happily. The third gripe is the fact that apparently the alt-right has co-opted the trad wife as a kind of gateway drug into white supremacy. It's that old leftist adage of, everyone who disagrees with me is a white supremacist. Oh, 
It gets so old. The most notable piece of this commentary was an article by Julie Ebner, who was an expert on the far right, entitled Trad Wives Meet the Women Radicalized into Complete Subservience to Men. In this article, she details that amidst the unsavory halls of Reddit and 4chan are a group of women who literally are throwing themselves into subservience to men, right down to the point of using the idea of putting their husband's needs first to justify being in a physically abusive relationship. Now that is genuinely bad. According to Julie, the way these innocent looking trad wives open the door to white supremacy is by encouraging women to have as many white babies as possible. They call it the white baby challenge. Okay Julie Abner, we get it. There are a lot of weird people on the internet. But to use these strange and entirely fringe communities as an example of the entirety of those who enjoy the trad wife lifestyle, those who choose to live a simpler life renouncing many of the luxuries you can have on a double income is just disingenuous. The outright does not have the monopoly on traditional family values, for goodness sake. I mean, just sod off. Considering how easily their arguments fall apart, why have feminists persisted with this raging, rather panicked response to the trad wife? Well, the problem is that their whole feminist thing has been insisting that squeezing women into male archetypes is the only path to women's happiness, and then blaming the fact that women are so stressed out all the time on men and the patriarchy and structural barriers and unconscious bias and all, those, all of those other vague, abstract terms. Seeing the trad wife painted in a positive life demonstrates that women don't actually have to lead the feminist ideal life in order to feel happy and free. As such, admitting the choice to stay home and put husband and family first is actually a path to happiness and satisfaction would be admitting that feminism was, at least on some levels, wrong. And since modern feminism is based on a uh, flimsy premise as it is, given most of the battles they claim to be fighting have already been fought and won years ago by women who worked a lot harder and sacrificed a lot more, they can't afford any chinks in the armor. Hence the comparison to white supremacy and 1950s absolutism and insisting these women are somehow brainwashed or radicalized, etc, etc. In addition to their ideological anxiety, there is also the guilt and jealousy factor I mentioned earlier. I don't think I'm too far off in saying that the women who so frantically deride trad wives do so at least in part because trad wives make them feel inadequate. There is not a career woman alive who hasn't at some point felt bad about not spending enough time with her kids or not making enough time for her husband. So when confronted by women who are able to do both very successfully and happily in lieu of a career, a lot of career women f see this as an affront to their own efforts. You could almost call it the severe case of FOMO or fear of missing out. The hypocrisy of course is that feminists have said over and over and over again that it's fine if women choose to live the life of a traditional wife and mother. Yet here is a movement of women who are doing just that and instead of feminists applauding them for living how they want to live, they're saying they're somehow doing the wrong thing by feminism. Not everything women choose is a feminist choice as trad wives have proven. Make no mistake, women are capable of being just as misogynistic as men. <coughs> It's also ironic that fourth wave feminists generally accept and celebrate every other kind of family lifestyle. Single parent families, same sex parents, throuples, trans parents, non-binary parents, all of which are by historical standards very radical and out of left field and still are in most parts of the world, but they won't accept the lifestyle that men and women have been living for literally hundreds of years. I mean, are you kidding me? Also ironic is the fact that so many feminists go on about how terrible it is that traditionally women's work isn't valued and how capitalism is bad because everyone's worth is tied in with how much money they make. But look, now here are women doing the most traditional of women's work and not deriving their value from how much money they make. And yet that's bad? I mean the inconsistencies are astounding but you know. Not surprising. The animosity towards trad wives has proven, yet again, that modern feminism is a movement driven by hypocrisy and double standards. Choose whatever you want to do, women, so long as it's a choice that we dictate. Believe whatever you want to believe, so long as it's what we believe as well. But as we all know, self-awareness has never been the strong suit of the fourth wave feminist.
If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.